Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in organic chemistry, we have alcohol functional groups and we know that alcohols can be oxidized. But interestingly, we have three different types of alcohols, our primary alcohol, secondary alcohol and tertiary alcohol. And the extent of oxidation of these three different alcohols are actually quite different. So in this video, we want to spend some time to run through the oxidation reaction of alcohols. Now we know that we have three different types of alcohol. A primary alcohol where the alcohol carbon it is attached to one R group or alkyl group. Secondary alcohol, the alcohol carbon it is attached to two alkyl groups. And the tertiary alcohol where the alcohol carbon it is attached to three alkyl groups. Now the extent of oxidation of these three different alcohols are actually different. So let's run through the oxidation of alcohols part by part. The first consideration will be involving primary alcohol. This alcohol carbon, which we are highlighting as yellow here, it is attached to one alcohol group. So this is considered as a primary alcohol. Now in terms of oxidation, primary alcohol can be oxidized to an aldehyde functional group. An aldehyde functional group in turn can be oxidized to a carboxylic acid functional group. So from left to right, this will be oxidation. Of course, what we can also do is we can also oxidize a primary alcohol directly to a carboxylic acid. So you notice we have all these numbers here. Reaction one will be the reaction involving primary alcohol to aldehyde functional group. The second reaction will be the oxidation of aldehyde to carboxylic acid. The third reaction will be the oxidation of primary alcohol all the way to the acid functional group. So we want to discuss all these reactions because they are related to each other, related to primary alcohol. Now the reverse direction, if I consider the reverse direction from right to left, all this will be the opposite of oxidation, right? It will be a reduction. So let's run through that as well. I can reduce an aldehyde back to a primary alcohol. So this will be reaction number four that we will talk about later. Carboxylic acid, I can reduce this all the way to a primary alcohol. This will be reaction number five. Now interestingly, in principle, carboxylic acid can be reduced to an aldehyde functional group. But in A-level chemistry syllabus, we don't really have the reagents and conditions to do this particular reduction. So if I want to convert acid to aldehyde functional group, what we have to do is I have to reduce this acid all the way back to a primary alcohol, followed by oxidation to aldehyde functional group. So the overview of oxidation and reduction reactions, we have already gone through that. So let's run through each of the reactions. Now the first reaction it will be the oxidation of primary alcohol to aldehyde functional group. Now because aldehydes can be further oxidized to carboxylic acid and it is actually quite easy for us to oxidize aldehyde. So we have to do a mild oxidation and once the aldehyde is formed, we have to remove it from the reaction mixture. So the reagents and conditions for this conversion it is actually quite specific. We have to use dichromate in dilute H2SO4 reflux with immediate distillation. Now manganate it is too strong, an oxidizing agent, if I'm using manganate, even if we do distillation, I will not end up with an aldehyde functional group, you'll be oxidized all the way to a carboxylic acid. Also, if I'm using dichromate in dilute H2SO4, reflux, but with no distillation, the aldehyde functional group, you'll be oxidized all the way to a carboxylic acid. So this reaction is pretty specific. We have to use dichromate in dilute H2SO4, reflux with immediate distillation. Now you notice what we have also indicated here is how do I know that this conversion it is considered as an oxidation? What we do is I remove this hydrogen that is attached to carbon. I remove a hydrogen which is attached to oxygen. Then I form a double bond between the carbon and oxygen and it will become my aldehyde functional group. So it is considered as an oxidation because you are losing two hydrogen. Losing hydrogen it is defined as oxidation. Now reaction number two, it is the oxidation of aldehyde to carboxylic acid functional group. Acids in general are stable to oxidation. So the choice of oxidizing agent actually is not that much of an issue. I can use dichromate, I can use manganate as well in dilute H2SO4 heating or reflux or heat under reflux. So this is pretty straightforward. And this is considered as an oxidation because how do I convert this aldehyde functional group to an acid functional group? You notice I have this CH bond. I just squeeze an oxygen between this carbon and hydrogen and it will be converted to the acid functional group. So adding of oxygen, it is also considered as oxidation. Now next reaction three, 
we know that I can oxidize the primary alcohol all the way to a carboxylic acid. Actually, it is just oxidation, but I just don't try to protect or prevent the aldehyde from further oxidation, right? So it is a very simple process. I can just use manganate or dichromine in dilute H so far, heat or reflux or heating under reflux. And in this case, again, I can determine that this is an oxidation because I'm losing two hydrogen. The carbon will lose a hydrogen. The oxygen will lose a hydrogen. I form a double bond between the carbon and oxygen. I squeeze an oxygen in between the carbon and this hydrogen and you'll be converted to an acid functional group. So I'm losing hydrogen and I'm adding oxygen. So of course we know that this is an oxidation reaction. Now next reaction number four, let us also spend some time to talk about the reduction of certain functional groups to form our alcohols. So reaction number four, it is the reduction of aldehyde to form primary alcohol. Now the reduction of aldehyde, it is actually quite easy to reduce. So we can use quite a number of reducing agents. I can use NaBH4 aqueous at room temperature, or I can use lithium aluminum hydride, LiAlH4 in dry ether, followed by water at room temperature, or I can also use hydrogen in platinum catalyst heat. So aldehydes and carbonyl compounds in general are quite easy to reduce. I can use any of these reducing agent. So this is just the reverse of oxidation. I'm adding a hydrogen to carbon. I'm also adding a hydrogen to oxygen to form this primary alcohol. So adding hydrogen, it is considered as reduction. Now reaction number five, it is the last reaction that we want to consider involving primary alcohol, which is the reduction of carboxylic acid to a primary alcohol. Now carboxylic acid, because it is harder to reduce, so therefore we need a stronger reducing agent. In this case, I can only use lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether, followed by water at room temperature. So what I'm doing basically is I'm removing this oxygen, I'm adding a hydrogen to carbon to oxygen. So therefore, losing oxygen and gaining hydrogen, this is reduction. All right, putting all these reactions together, then we will have this diagram, which I think will be useful for us to remember the reactions involving oxidation of primary alcohol to form aldehydes and carboxylic acids, as well as the reduction of aldehydes to form primary alcohols and carboxylic acids to form primary alcohols. Now, what we have to keep in mind is in terms of functional group, a primary alcohol is linked to an aldehyde functional group, which is in turn linked to a carboxylic acid functional group. So therefore, if I want to get a carboxylic acid functional group, I can only oxidize a primary alcohol. I cannot oxidize a secondary alcohol to get an aldehyde or acid, or I cannot oxidize a tertiary alcohol to get an aldehyde and acid. Now, similarly, if I want to get a primary alcohol, I have to reduce an aldehyde. I cannot reduce another carbonyl compound such as ketone. And of course, I have to reduce a carboxylic acid to form primary alcohol. Now, next, let's look at secondary alcohols. Now, secondary alcohol, the carbon that carries the alcohol group, the OH group, has two R groups or two alkyl groups attached to it. This carbon has one R group and two R groups. So this guy is our secondary alcohol. Now, in terms of oxidation of secondary alcohol, it is a lot more straightforward. There's only one functional group that we have to consider, which will be a ketone functional group. And in terms of conversion, very easily, I just lose a hydrogen for the carbon, lose a hydrogen for this oxygen, form this double bond between the carbon and oxygen, I'll get this ketone functional group. Ketone is stable to oxidation in general. So in terms of oxidation, I can use manganate or dichromine in dilute H2SO4, heating or reflux. Now the reverse process, of course, it is the reduction of ketone back to a secondary alcohol and carbonyl compounds, as mentioned previously, is in general easy to reduce. I can use any of the reducing agent. I can use any BH4 equals at room temperature, lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether followed by water at room temperature, or hydrogen in platinum catalyst heat. And the reverse direction will be reduction. Now remember the relationship between the secondary alcohol and ketone, it is important. If I oxidize a secondary alcohol, I'll get a ketone. I cannot form other carbonyl compounds or I cannot form carboxylic acids by oxidation of a secondary alcohol. Now conversely, if I reduce the ketone, I can only get a secondary alcohol. I cannot reduce the ketone to get a primary alcohol or tertiary alcohol. Now finally, our tertiary alcohol, the carbon that carries the alcohol group, this OH group, it has three alkyl groups or three R groups. So this guy has three R groups. This is a tertiary alcohol. Now, tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. The reason is because in order for you to be oxidized, then you have to either gain oxygen or lose hydrogen, right? This carbon, you notice because it is already attached to three R groups, there's no hydrogen 
attached to carbon, so I cannot lose a hydrogen, or there's no hydrogen for this tertiary carbon to lose, so therefore tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the oxidation of primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, and tertiary alcohols. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.